clearly we've had a very busy few days in the at Bristol office, but it's been time well spent, I promise you, because we've been investigating what turns a piece of paper into a piece of aeronautical engineering. And today we're going to be sharing with you the science behind making a perfect paper plane. Here I have the classic paper plane design known as a dart. To get this in the air, we need to be concerned with four primary forces, gravity, drag, thrust, and lift. So to get our paper plane to fly, we need to generate lift. So how does a wing do this? Well, you might have seen something called an aerofoil, which is that classic plane wing design. With an aerofoil, it relies on something called the Bernoulli effect, with the air traveling over the top of the wing going faster than the air underneath. This creates a difference in pressure, because the air on the top of the wing has a lower pressure than the air underneath. This higher pressure then pushes up on the wing, creating lift. But the wings of our paper plane aren't shaped like an aerofoil, they're flat. So how do they generate lift? Well, it's all down to Newton's third law of motion, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And your paper plane doesn't fly like this, it flies like this. So as the air comes in and hits the wing, it's deflected downwards. The force of this air traveling down creates an equal and opposite force pushing up, and that's lift. So what you may have noticed is that the dart tends to nosedive, and the reason for this is because of its center of gravity, which is around about here. So as the dart flies through the air, it starts dipping down and we lose that angle of attack and stop generating lift. So what we need to do is to shift that center of gravity further back. We've refined this design and folded in the nose, shifting that center of gravity back, and this should hopefully keep that angle of attack for longer, generating more lift. Let's see how this does. Okay, so this generated so much lift that eventually the drag overcame the thrust and we crashed. But we still need to think about shifting that center of gravity. So we've replaced the dart now with the Mark III, which again has a similar design, folding that nose back to shift the center of gravity, but isn't quite as extreme as this. So hopefully this should have the right balance. Okay, not too bad, but one of the problems you might be encountering is your plane rolling, which is caused by your wings being angled down. Any uneven airflow passing over the top of the wings is going to push it so that it's flying upside down. You can overcome this by increasing something called the dihedral angle and pushing your wings up. This increases the stability because any airflow passing over the top and pushing it this way is going to be counterbalanced by the opposing wing leveling it back out. So there are loads of different ways to make a paper aeroplane, but through our scientific experimentation, we quite like the Mark III. So maybe you've got your own designs, tweet us and let us know. But in the meantime, stick around and we'll show you how to make this one. For more on the science of things going up, watch how to make a hot air balloon. And for things going down, check out the physics of falling. And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.